An historic Russia-U.S. nuclear disarmament deal has finally come into force at a high-profile security conference in Munich today. The long-negotiated treaty means Moscow and Washington will cut the number of their warheads to around 1,500 each. RT's Yegor Piskunov now joins us live from Germany to bring us up to date on this occasion. Hello to you, Yegor. So uh, how did the historic moment look? What did you see? Well, it looked quite formal and it was uh, a formality, just an exchange of these ratification documents or ratification instruments as they're called. But even according to the Russian foreign minister, even though this was a, f a formal exchange of paper, it was quite a significant event, uh, both for the relations between Moscow and Washington and for global security as well, because it officially puts the new strategic arms reduction treaty between Russia and the United States into force now uh, within 45 days the two sides will supply each other with full information on uh, the uh, the nuclear facilities and nuclear weapons strategic arms that each side possesses in 60 days they will resume inspections on how the reduction of strategic weapons is going uh, both sides said that this is a result of long and difficult negotiations there were up obstacles, but they did manage to work as one team and achieve this goal. Uh, previously, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov spoke at the conference and said that this is a result which could have only been achieved uh, having a unified approach and a similar view on global issues. The START Treaty has been agreed on the understanding between Russia and the US that unilateral views on global security lead nowhere. It's clear the basis of strong Russia-US relations in many areas must be equal participation. We are sure START will have a positive effect on global security. Hillary Clinton, the U.S. State Secretary, also said that it was quite symbolic that this exchange of the ratification documents happened in Munich since Germany was the country divided uh, after the Second World War and during the Cold War era. And now that uh, this exchange of the ratification documents happened here, uh, the uh, two sides, Russia and the United States, are, have chosen this location to move closer to each other as well. It's quite important that uh, the treaty was uh, ratified by both sides in its initial original version. Nothing was changed, although uh, as ratification went on on both sides, both sides did have to make some non-binding statements, but they do not affect the actual implementation of this treaty. Uh, just to remind you, it's aimed at reducing the number of strategic arms on each side by over one-third. Now, Yegor, uh, there are just many, many world leaders and other uh, ministers in attendance of this three-day security forum, the annual security conference in Munich. Uh, they must be covering a broad range of subjects here. What are some of them? A very broad range. In fact, this security conference is often referred to as the Security Davos because uh, many world leaders and top level politicians are taking part in discussions on some of the most contemporary and important issues. And we've already heard uh, uh, statements and speeches made by the Secretary General of the United Nations, by the Prime Minister of Great Britain, by the U.S. Uh, Secretary of State, uh, by Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov also, of course, who uh, focused on Russia's proposal to uh, to build and make up a legal document which would ensure the safety and security of European nations and also reminded of uh, Moscow's proposal to build a unified anti-missile defense system which would include Russia, the United States and the European Union, thus uh, letting them share the responsibility for the safety of one another and providing stability uh, uh, and a stable security structure in the world. Sergei Lavrov stressed that this stability is very much needed and if it will not be, uh, if it will not be kept as a, a result of mutual work, Russia will have to be forced to do it on its work, on its own.
If the dialogue between Moscow and Washington is used only to distract attention from the US and NATO's own anti-missile defense system, we could lose a unique chance. An agreement to discuss the possibility of a joint anti-missile shield doesn't automatically mean Russia is ready to join the program, which is being drafted without its participation. The idea of take it or leave it doesn't work here. The Russian Foreign Minister also talked about how both the European Security Treaty and this uh, project of the unified anti-missile defense system, they're both essential in order to erase the outdated dividing lines left since the Cold War era and some of the stereotypes uh, left since then as well. But as we found out here at this conference, for some people, uh, old stereotypes are really hard to get rid of. We are proceeding with it because of the threat we face from Iran, not from the Soviet Union. And when you look from the former Soviet Union. Many other issues were discussed here as well, of course, like nuclear non-proliferation, meaning uh, Iran's nuclear program, frozen conflicts, the situation in the Middle East, and of course, the current crisis in Egypt with the international community and top-level politicians voicing their views and their concerns of, on what's happening in the country at the moment. And you go to the conference, uh, spreads into Sunday as well, so we'll be checking with you uh, throughout the weekend to see what else they talk about. Artis, you got to piss off at the annual uh, security summit there in Munich. Thank you.